YouTube here again with another review this time it's for the Sonos Amp a very cool product that kinda sits in a weird place um, I would call it uh, middle class audio or upper middle class audio maybe but uh, you know it actually it does do what it's advertised to do it just has its limitations so I'm gonna give a review of the amp what it does well what it doesn't do well what I would recommend using it for and what I would avoid using it with and then at the very end I'm gonna go into Sonos and show you some settings um, that are probably important and uh, then I'll go into Spotify, which is what most people are going to use the amp for, because they're probably just going to use it to power some of their favorite old speakers, and uh, show you some settings in there, just to make sure you're getting the most out of it, you know, without spending any additional money, just making sure you get your system set up right. So the uh, Sonos amp is essentially an integrated amplifier. It's both your preamp and your amp. Um, it actually might be better to compare it to a receiver. Back in the day, there were uh, you know three classifications. You had your amp, which was just a power amp, needed a controller like a preamp, or you had integrated amps, which is something that I'm a big fan of. Those have a preamplification stage with volume control and source selector, as well as the amplifier itself. Or you had your receiver, which was an amplifier, a preamplifier, and get this technology baby a radio tuner sick right yeah I know you're thinking fuck that's crazy I can't believe they put all three in one unit so uh, the Sonos amp is the modern day equivalent of a receiver and it's very good at being a streamlined receiver and really shitty at being an actual receiver um, the reason that I said it's really shitty is because you can see from this picture that there's only one set of inputs on the back that's an analog red and white line level input so you can only hook up one external device I guess technically there is an arc HDMI connection above it to hook in your TV so that's two devices um, I know right mind-blowing it's uh, it's a bummer that they didn't put a few more inputs on this thing because then it could really be your system controller like you could plug in your phonograph or your CD player or <coughs> your television or you know whatever other thing you wanted to be able to plug into this guy I would have put um, an optical a digital coax and two sets of the red white line level inputs and if people wanted more than that like if they had an old tape player and a bunch of other shit you know, then this just wouldn't be the product for them. But that would be one limitation and reason not to buy this guy, is lack of inputs. On the output stage, it has exactly what you want. A line level sub to control your individual subwoofer, which you're probably going to need, and a left and right powered speaker terminal output, which is what you really buy this thing for. Because what you're what you're really doing with the Sonos amp which is actually the Sonos receiver is you're using it to play music off of your favorite streaming service which is Spotify because that's how market share works you don't have title we know it and then you are playing that music through a set of good speakers instead of a set of Sonos speakers no offense to Sonos but they're kinda like the modern day equivalent of Bose right like their speakers are decent but no audiophile would call them good so anyway going along with this um, the purpose of this device is so that you can have whole house music because you've got some Sonos speakers in other rooms and in the room that you have this device you have a nice set of speakers and this device drives those speakers and makes them seamlessly integrate into your Sonos system it allows you to control the volume and the track selection and all the convenient shit from your phone and voila music comes out of your speakers instead of out of Sonos speakers so for that it does it does what it says well and potentially you can get some TV sound out of it or 
one device, which is probably a phonograph because you're probably a hipster douchebag and you're plugging your phonograph into this as well because that's the only analog device that you own. You don't actually have like a good CD player that has a really good digital to analog converter in it that you're outputting to this thing. But that's okay. That's the majority of users. Again, I just wish they had put literally a few more inputs on this thing. I don't need it to look like the back of my old Yamaha, which had like eight sets of line level inputs and two opticals and two digital coax and all that crap. So, now that we've discussed what it is and what it do, uh, it's time to discuss what it do right and what it don't. Um, if you have speakers with a low to moderate power demand, then the Sonos amp is probably for you. I would describe speakers that fit this specification as either bookshelf speakers or high efficiency floor standing speakers. If you have speakers that require even a significant amount of power up to a lot of power, do not buy this thing. It's not gonna work. Well, it's not gonna work well. It's gonna work. Badly. So, the ideal setup for something like this would be to a pair of bookshelf speakers with a subwoofer, because then you will have everything that you need. You'll have ample power to your bookshelf speakers provided by the amp, and you'll have ample power to your subwoofer provided by the subwoofer's powered amplifier that is built into the subwoofer and is controlled by the Sonos Amp's line level sub output LFE connection. Another potentially decent use for this, and this would probably be uncommon but not a bad use, would be to get speakers that are efficient, that have a high sensitivity rating, so that they don't require a ton of power to get a decent amount of volume and still produce a full range of sound, most notably lower frequency sound, you know, bass waves. So something like a Klipsch uh, speaker, which are notorious for having high efficiency, or some other type of floor standing speaker that has high efficiency would be acceptable to run without a subwoofer. Not that you couldn't add a subwoofer to it, but you'd probably need a pretty darn good subwoofer if you were going to blend it with full range floor standing speakers because it would really just be producing those super low bass waves below you know 50 or 60 hertz and even then you would want it to be tight and punchy so that it didn't make things sound muddy. Overall review for the Sonos amp, <clears throat> I would have to say slightly overpriced as most Sonos stuff is. Um, works quite well when used for the things that it's good with, works really poorly when attempting to drive a significant load like a higher end speaker or a low efficiency floor standing speaker, and um, should have had more inputs. Other than that, I'd say damn good. If you are looking for a cheap equivalent to the modern day receiver or integrated amplifier and you don't have a bunch of other shit that you want to plug into it, which to be fair is me. I basically just have Sonos, really. That's it. I know. I'm a sack. I'm the worst. Um, then it's great. If you had maybe Sonos and a photograph, maybe Sonos, a phonograph, and a television with a ARC HDMI output, bam, you're using all two inputs to their maximum capability. And again, this is if you're driving efficient floor standing speakers or more likely <clears throat> speakers that are smaller like bookshelf speakers with a nice little subwoofer. So to end this out, we're going to uh, show you just a few of the controls and recommendations when setting up the Sonos amp. So you've got the system itself. You're going to want to go down to audio compression <coughs> and turn it off. Yeah, I know. Um, crazy, right? Then, if we go to the Sonos amp itself, if you have a sub plugged in, it will show you subwoofer control, which is great. I do not have a sub plugged in currently to mine. 
but you will want to make sure that stereo mono is set to stereo because obviously you have two speakers that's kind of the point and you will want to use the volume limit function here to limit the volume that is maximally produced to prevent the amp from damaging your speakers <coughs> excuse me this is a really cool feature of Sonos it's the equivalent of those old receivers that had like a secret volume knob on the back so your kids couldn't turn it up too much and blow your speakers. This thing is really important. There is a maximum volume limit that you can play your speakers at safely without damaging them. You're going to want to go ahead and find out what that is and set it to that. And that way, when you want to jam, you just press the volume up key on your smartphone as hard as you can and you let that baby rock without having to worry about oopsie doodle I turned it up too much and um, you know some big you know dynamic range section came through and blasted out my speakers so that's really all that you have to do to my recollection with the actual Sonos system uh, volume limit stereo and mono I wouldn't mess with the EQ um, but that's because I'm kind of a purist. If you like a little bit more bass, a little bit more treble, you know, go for it. Or if you're a total douchebag, click the loudness button. Uh, now, finally, we have Spotify itself. So, um, on Spotify, you are going to go down to the normalize volume setting and turn it off. This will prevent Spotify from using digital sound processing on your music. You're going to want to make sure the allow explicit content is on. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll go down to the one that really matters the most, which is um, Wi-Fi streaming. And you're going to want to set that to very high. And you're going to want to turn auto adjust quality settings to off. Auto adjust quality will mess with your streaming quality. You only want to stream at very high, which for Spotify is medium because it's still capped at 320 kilobits per second on the premium plan through the app. If you really give a shit, you can look this up. Spotify has a page that actually answers what their kilobit rate is uh, based on your plan, whether you're on premium or free. And the device, I think like desktop caps out at around 200 give or take something and the app allows you to go higher but you have to have premium uh, cellular streaming obviously you can set that to whatever you want because you're not doing that at home you're probably doing it at your local um, volleyball game where you're putting it through your Bluetooth speaker uh, speaking of which I'm gonna set mine down to normal um, anyway those are the settings that are gonna matter auto adjust quality off Wi-Fi streaming set to high and the volume auto normalize thing turned off. Real quick recap. Back over to Sonos. Volume limit. Maximum that is safe for your speakers and doesn't make it sound like crap. And over here in system settings, audio compression uncompressed. That'll get you the best experience through your Sonos amp. My recommendation, bookshelves and a subwoofer are probably the way to go, but high efficiency floor standing speakers will do the job as well. Anyway, I hope that this review was helpful for people. It is a good product. It is a little overpriced. It won't connect multiple devices unless one of them's HDMI arc and the other one's line in. But let's face it, you just want to stream Spotify to your old set of speakers that you like. So go ahead and buy yourself a Sonos amp. It, it'll be fine.